I sterilize. The first thing I do is I'll use the 70% uh, ethyl alcohol and I'll just run everything that I'm doing through it. Then I'll rinse it with distilled water and then I'll rinse it with saline solution because alcohol will sometimes leave a uh, residue. So you don't want any of that residue or anything left. So the first thing I've had is I've got alcohol in this and it's probably a good idea to write on these what you've got in them. You don't think forget? <laughs> I'll just put a, two letters in there. Never clear. Never clear. Never clear. Never clear. Never clear. Never clear. Must have got four So, Kim uh, wipes. Joe, did you have Kim wipes? Yeah. Not yet. Right here. Um, the Kim wipes are sterile like sterile tissue papers. Um, they're real handy. Thank you, Joe. But I'll wipe the alcohol off the outside of this, but there's some in there. And I'm just right now sterilizing the syringe. And these are blunt-tipped needles. That's what I use for everything. Um, I mean, they're, yeah, you're not going to run them in yourself that way. Um, so I'm going to load my <coughs> bubbler over here up to the red line. This is the Apis bubbler up to the red line and go ahead and put the tank on so I can set the bubbles. And that'll be the first time I've tried this either. But I want to put my distilled water in another one of these. And you put distilled water in the, in the bubblers. And that's just distilled water from Walmart. That's plenty good enough. Jason, how often do you need to change that in your bubbler? Uh, every time you use it. Okay. Yeah. You go to Sue now, I think it's more than that. It's like fifteen hundred dollars or eighteen hundred and she's got she's booked up to twenty twenty two, I think. Really? Yeah. Somebody was just telling me yesterday, some guy from Texas was <laughs> But now she would be the one to learn it from. She's the best there is. Don't talk to her. Four, bubble, four bubbles a second. Yeah. Should I have a team? <coughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you add to this collection? No, dude, they have too much fun with me. I have a logical mind. I can't deal with a lot of people. Um, all right, so. Here's the thing that I was telling you about the forcep grips for the sting hook. Yeah. See, they're just real tiny, fine forceps. Oh, yeah. And to me, that's what I started with, but I can use those a lot better than I can one sting of those sting hook. hooks. But, um, I mean, Sue won't use these. She swears by the sting hooks. So it, it just depends on what you learned with. Some people like one, some other. Yep. Yeah. And then the other end, I don't have anything under there right now for it to see. Um, the other end, you want. Ain't nothing else in there you dig around at. Yeah, there it is. You want the, the uh, ventral hook. I got two or three different ones in there. I think it works more than It goes in. I've got a whole bunch of needles. The ventral hook? That yeah. hook goes on the end, the tip of it. Nothing else. I take care of you guys. Can we appreciate it, Chuck? All right. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> yeah, I don't mean mine. I got a whole bunch of stuff.
These collars, I've been informed, are not to hold that up and keep it from slipping. They're to hold it up so that... Um, it don't fall. No, they're to hold it up so you can loosen this and tilt it without it falling. It don't fall. Yeah. And then we have, are those big... or Todd? Are those big queens or... They're good, oh. they're, they're good size. Okay, I see. No, it's the regular size coin. Well, I have a couple eat. different... Any two queens. holders. Mm -hmm. Some of them, the, the big queens won't go in, and some of them, like, see the size difference yeah, in the holders? Oh, see. Did you make them? They come with the kit. They come with the kit. But I had to specify to him I wanted to. Them to make, for, make uh, hooks for. Oh, thank you. I had to specify you, to know, him that I wanted uh, ones for big queens and for small queens. And where did you get those? See, that's from? the typical. Ah, I got all of them off of eBay. Should have been this. So, and then you have a backup tube. So you have the queen holder and a backup tube. Yeah. Typically, I'll start the queen in here headways, mm -hmm. and put this over and let her back up into the tube. And then she goes head first down over the CO2. Yeah. Now, the thing I hadn't tried yet was will my Slay queen holder mm -hmm. fit on this uh, APHIS Engineering? And it will, but it's really tight. So. Yeah, they're about the same. They're both really tight. I guess after those seals loosen up. So this is brand new. It's never seen a queen before. Can you put me some <laughs> more keys? Can you put me some more key? <laughs> Can you put me some more <laughs> distilled water in this, please? I need to hang key. Pick it up. Pick it up. All right. So now where's my high capacity syringe? Y'all already got your high-capacity syringes set up, right? I've used this one to collect drone semen with so far, mm -hmm. and I've used, of course, the Harbo one a lot, and I think they're about equal as far as as far as that goes. Um, Joe has one that we engineered when he brought his stuff down that's similar to this and probably cost a whole lot less to engineer. Yeah. See there? Yeah, does the same thing. These are all sterile syringes in the body. Yeah. Yeah. And it still does one turn. Yeah. Ten microliters. Yes. I mean, Jason's already checked it out. So I'll start and sterilize all you this stuff. Mm-hmm. Then make this. Then make the base. Starting with the alcohol. Yeah. This is where I like the blunt tip needles. You'll see a lot of people use those squeezy bottles for lab stuff that's got a little mm -hmm. snout on them. I'd rather use just a blunt tip needle and a syringe. But I'll run alcohol through this. I'll basically just fill it up and let it run. I'll squirt a little on the end. Let that drip out. Where do you get those blunt tip needles? eBay. eBay. I would off eBay. eBay. Amazon. I need one to fill up my... Right there. Mm -hmm. The tip of the syringe, you just, I just basically try to make sure that I've got everything sterilized. Now the shaft of that syringe doesn't touch anything, so you don't have to worry so much about it. Um, then, this is my tube that runs from the syringe to the Mm -hmm. uh, to the capillary barrel, and I'll go ahead and here's the reason I like the the uh, syringe. Yeah, I can just twist that off and twist it on here and run. And I usually try to do a count of about ten running that alcohol through. Ten seconds, and I'm pretty much guaranteed that alcohol's went all the way through that. Now, I'll go ahead and put my capillary tube on. If I was going to collect drone semen, I would put a fresh new capillary tube on. But I've already collected the craniolin semen from my apiary that we're going to do Todd's Queens with. And I've got it packed in here. There's a little 100 microliter capillary in here. And the tips of it are filled with um, petroleum jelly. Petroleum jelly. Yeah. Let me 
Supportive, supportive isn't he? <laughs> I see you breaking a lot of stuff. Keith, remember what Jason sold those queens for? I know that's going to just change your opinion of that. I know, that's what's going to in my head right now. Alright, so. Figure this stuff out. I collected this earlier in the week. It's only a couple days old. Drone semen, uh, according to Garrett Dodds at the USDA, this can lay on your desk out of the sunlight, just in a shady area or in the desk drawer somewhere. I think light does more damage to it than anything. For four weeks, and it's still viable enough to get a queen that'll lay all summer. Hmm. So, and when you're doing artificially inseminated queens, you can make them so that they'll last three years like a regular queen, but the main purpose of an inseminated queen is for genetics, to make yeah. a breeder queen. So yeah. a lot of times people don't care if they only last one summer. Yeah. It just depends on what you, 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 you get, you make your daughters out of it, and then you pick the best of the best daughters, and then you cross those back, and you pick the best of the best, and it's a selection process. Mm -hmm. That's why book, bookkeeping is so important. You continue to upgrade. Yes. But um, if you were selling that coin to somebody that would be wanting a, you could do the more. Yeah, if if I'm selling them, if it's in, if it's intended for this, to go to somebody that wants a breeder, I definitely do the the whole ten microliters and everything done by the book, and then that queen will last just as good as a production queen. Sue's got queens. She told me the other day, you got to be on your shirt. Um, she told me the other day she's got queens that are like four years old and still laying just fine, and all she does she does not open mate at all. All she does is inseminate queens. So the tips of this has got petroleum jelly in them. And I can leave it in one end, but the other end i got to push it out so I'm down to the semen level. But before I put this in, I want to go ahead and sterilize my um, insemination tip because I just ran alcohol through the hose. I haven't ran it through the tip yet. and the tubing's on the small end of the tip to protect it. Right. Yeah, I had to figure that out a minute ago. So, go ahead and run a little bit through there. That is a good size hole. Um, that's not the smallest of the tips. I picked that's probably a medium sized one. I picked that out because I'm using semen that was collected through a big tip. And if you collect it through a big tip and then you put a small tip on, you got issues. Because it's going to clog up like crazy. I thought I'd say if I draw that out of a small tip, it'd done that big stream, I'd have good. Yeah. All right. So I've run alcohol through this. I'm going to lay it over here on my clean box. And I clean, every time I'm done using this stuff, I take alcohol wipes and clean everything when I, before I put it up. So I've just ran alcohol through it. I ran alcohol through the, the syringe itself. And now I'm going to cap this and go to the distilled water. You already got it for me, Keith. Thank you. It's over here in this other jar. And now I'm going to take this high capacity syringe and do the same thing I did with the alcohol and just let it run through. And you can see little, you can see like swirlies in the water from the alcohol, so you know there's that alcohol leaves some kind of residue in there. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm using the way my syringe is. They come sterile packed. I shouldn't have to do the syringe yet. No. Just dispose Just it. Dispose it and pull out a new one the next time. Then you're I good. Like, I like it. Yeah. But you'll need to do the tip. Hmm? You'll you, need, you need to do the tip. tip. Now, the hose, yeah. yeah, if I am collecting drone semen, which when you guys start doing hands-on here later or tomorrow, whenever we get to that, um, I will have the actual capillary tube in this chain also so that it's getting sterilized at the same time right. as everything else.
Joe, what kind of bottles of uh, saline solution do you have? Are they small bottles? I've got these. You got, well, got, you got a bottle, yeah. like with a lid on it? Yeah. That'd be handy. Um, yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. I've, I've got a bag of saline there, but I'd have to draw it out, and it's just going to take more time, so I'm going to... I'm going to go the quick route and bum off somebody. <laughs> so this is still distilled water, and uh, I'm going to make sure I run some over the tip. You need to be doing like smoke and abandonment when you drop in, just point it up in there and squirt it. Instead of putting it in that jar on the floor. <laughs> I was going to put it on the floor, but... All right, so let's see if I got another. How long has that one got on it? I can't tell. Good one. You can make us a lot of money. I need a worker. Joe. What's the order? Yeah. Joe. Pardon me? You gotta clean one of these. Yeah. I've got four somewhere, but I don't want that four. If I have a large bottle of something or something like this, this will last a long time. I you know, I'd might run some alcohol to that. I mean, as far as I know, it's clean. The alcohol okay. would be fine because it's going to, it's going to, uh, a lot, most of it's going to be, I mean, that's dry now. But if I'm using like saline or something, I, I won't contaminate the main bottle of it. I might need some more in a Okay. Bear with me. So, so I've done alcohol through everything, then distilled water through everything, and now I'm doing saline solution through everything. Um, first thing. And I understand you could do this in five or ten minutes if you're by yourself. Oh, I do. Yeah, I do. I'll do. Uh, I'll come home from work at five o'clock in the evening, catch 250 drones, uh, harvest them, inseminate 10 or 12 queens, and have them back in the banks by 10 o'clock that night. So yeah, you can do that. So it's 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 quick once you <laughs> get. <that. laughs> See that book I got lying here? Yes, sir. I did the same <laughs> book I got if I said that to mine. Tell him when he cleans up his job. That doesn't have anywhere else to put it right now. All right, so I've ran it through this. I've ran it through this. I'll turn that so I can see the numbers on it. And... I'm ready to hook this up, and I always put on these um, graduated capillaries. The blue marks different colors or different sizes capillaries. Like blue is 100 microliters, green is 50 microliters, uh, and they have a mark on them that says 100 microliters. That's from the tip to that mark. I always put the blue at the upper end. And these little suckers is easy broke. Now, when you acquired that semen <coughs> before and after, at each end of the semen before you put the royal jet, I mean, put the um, petroleum jelly in it, you've got the buffer solution that you're using in it. Right? No, no, okay. no. Just a very tiny, like a one millimeter gap in the tube. air bubble. Okay. That's between the petroleum jelly on this end and the petroleum jelly on this end. Okay. So. You obviously cannot push that petroleum jelly through the insemination tip. So you want to push that through before you uh, 
before you, you put the tip on. Right. And there's this is my capillary barrel. So all that seam is gonna pass through that jelly rather than. Yeah, but it's 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 fine because it's sterile. If you get the pure jelly and you don't use it for anything else, it's clean enough. Now, are you going to push that out with that, that syringe there or your other syringe? My other syringe. I was going to say, that's going to be risky. Yeah, no, I'm not pushing it out. I'm just <laughs> getting this ready to hold that whenever I get it done pushing through. And you're leaving the saline above that. So, yes. I'm, that's why I just put that on. It's because this tube is filled with saline. It's a hydraulic yeah. setup. Okay. You can't use air because air can be compressed and water cannot be compressed. So you want a hydraulic setup instead of a pneumatic setup. So that's why the saline is still hooked up to everything here. And because I don't want to touch too much, I'm just going to go ahead and hang that right there. And I'm going to get my tip ready to go on the... Put it over there. All right, that's right there. this to act as a barrel between my tip and the capillary tube. So I gotta have that ready. And it doesn't take a very long piece, maybe like what is that, three eighths of an inch? These things are so easily broken. It's not even funny. So then now they're cheap. Yeah, now that Joe makes them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put saline in this tip also, so I've got it ready and loaded before I put the semen in. Now will that stay full? If you lay it on lay it side? flat. Yeah, lay it flat on the side. It'll it'll stay full enough. Um. So now, uh, take, I'll leave that there for a minute, and reassemble our high capacity syringe. And here's something you got to think about too. We just loaded that all with saline. This has got 100 microliters of semen in it. So if you put this syringe in and you run it all the way to the bottom, you've only got room for suction. You don't have room to push out. So what I'm going to have to do is push this down a little bit and actually draw this up with saline so that I can push it out. Now if I'm collecting drones, I'll run it all the way to the bottom and let it pull it back. So you got to kind of think a little bit ahead of what you're doing. <laughs> So I've run that all the way to the end. I'm cool with this so far. I'm very I'm not so I'm not so I'm not so I think the queen did. She knows where it's at. That's why I asked them. They know where it's at. They last year. I forgot about that. We was thinking the pork plant would be here today too. We were seeing we'll go up and she's like, yay. <laughs> So the less air you have in this system, the less movement or compression and decompression you have when you're drawing and using semen, it's easier to get accurate measurements. And I had a ton of problem when I first started doing this with having a bubble in here somewhere, and then you would be pulling semen and pulling semen and nothing's moving, and all of a sudden it jumps. Well, that's because you're sucking that air, and it's compressing it in, and it jumps when it goes. And if you have no air in there for it to jump, you're far better off. 
So this has got saline in it. It's ready for me to just pull it off and stick it on here. Okay. So now we have a complete hydraulic system set up. Goes. This is a real heavy base, but you want something that weighs pretty good. Um, of course, you got the Harbo. It's the same principle. It um, works. It's just a different, different design. Same principle though. My little hose might be a tad too long, but now we're ready. To run. When I push that on there, notice it already pushed out some of that petroleum jelly. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and run the rest of it up. So you've got an air bubble between the petroleum jelly? There's jet. a very small air bubble there. Yeah. You say about a millimeter? About a millimeter. Okay. Right there at the end of it. Is yeah. You're looking at right there? Yep. Yeah. So there's the most of the jelly. There's a little air bubble right there. And that's it. All the jellies out of there. Right, put our tip on. Yeah. Okay. You bottom that tip out yeah. on that. Yeah. No. You, you leave don't. a little gap. You leave a little gap because if you bottom them out, it'll, it'll break. This. This glass tubing is so thin you don't want to touch it. that yeah, it'll it'll break in a heartbeat. That's the one that Joe made. Yes, that's the tip that Joe made. That goes down the tube, and these tubes are tapered on the end. So when you get down here, if you wiggle it a little bit, your rubber piece will come out. It holds that tip, but it doesn't hold it solid. So you want a little bit so that it's kind of like a shock absorber. You can move a little bit. A little, little forgiveness. Yes. All right. So that's our saline solution. And put some of this stuff back over here now. Am I bothering you with this light? No, actually, you're helping a great deal because I can't see where the crap in the dark anyways. He can't even see we've got light. All right, notice our <laughs> bubbler is still going at about four bubbles per second. Yep. You could you can leave that run all day and inseminate queens all summer long, and you might use one of those little tanks. I got a 20 gallon tank of CO2 at home, yeah. and I'll probably never end up using it all. So big. All right, so I have uh, that's a full bottle. Here's a smaller bottle. <laughs> This is just the 70% alcohol. There's no semen in that tip yet. All I'm going to do is just go down the length of the tip one time. Now I'm going to grab a dry one. Use a lot of chem wipes. So that's clean. And then I can go ahead and push the semen down. Alright, so it's probably within an eighth, eighth inch of the tip. I'm going to leave it set there, and that's saline solution, that's sterile saline solution in the end. So it's, it's ready for a queen now. Gotta make sure I got everything adjusted here because I had this set up for collecting drone semen. So I want to drop this some. I told you, did you not bring it? No. Okay. We could have played with it. Let's see. The safest engineering one has a lock right here. Mm -hmm. If you push that lever down, it won't let you go. So if you raise it, then you can run it. My Schley will sometimes drift. It doesn't have a lock. I, I like the lock. So, see how the the barrel of the capillary, the capillary barrel is pretty much lined up with the same angle as the yeah. queen holder. Yeah. That's uh, 
that's what you want. That's about the angle you're going to work on. Now, the thing with the Schley, you can change that angle on it. On this one, it's set solid to that angle, which should be fine because that's about the angle I use anyways. I don't want these to move around a whole lot. You want these to be tight enough so that they they move slowly, not loosely. You want them to have to be able to use a little bit of pressure to move them. Because if they move real easy, you just pull a stinger right out of it. You'd be amazed how easy it is to pull the stinger out of a queen. Um, and they will live after that. You can, well, not if you pull it out. If you break it off, they'll live. Because uh, I've broken some stingers half off and whenever I first started doing it, and the queen's just fine. Uh, she doesn't need to sting after that anyways. I like the crosswaves. All right, so now I'm pretty much ready. The red top spot that's over here. I, I need to sterilize my fingers again. And this is just the alcohol wipes again. Did you put that there? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, for, I keep forgetting there's like 20 cameras around me. <laughs> I think mine kicked off, so that's a good thing. I'm not as nervous now. That's one less. <laughs> and then Todd may need this. Yeah, we got another one. We'll need it. Yeah. All right. 